Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Cerberus Stone here, and today we're going to be playing some Cooking Companions. Now, I did already do something. I deleted the persistent data, or data, however you want to call it. And now we're restarting as if it's uh, brand new from scratch. So we are going to just jump back into it. I am actually re-redoing this because I did not hit the record button because I am a pro YouTuber and this is how we do. So only stream who is being watched or what is being watched by no one has seen that. So we're just going to jump right back in the, this. Uh... Yes, we're going to just start this normally this game is not suitable for children or those who are easily disturbed do you wish to continue yes oh my god so that actually fast forwards uh i have a mute button i hit control and the minus button in order to you know mute myself for coughs so i guess i can't do that during the uh scenes hmm <clears throat> that walk was brutal but this cabin is amazing full kitchen running water it really has everything finally a place i could read a good book in peace i can't wait to to uh, achoo. i'm sorry everyone it must be the dust <clears throat> get those allergies under control maria don't worry guys i'm sure with a little elbow grease we can make this cabin shine so you're volunteering so you are volunteering to clean gregor no uh, uh not many supplies here i guess we'll have to go out and get what we need there's a fireplace for making stew so let's gather up some firewood okay <laughs> leave that to me little guy i'll tidy up around the cabin need to save maria from dying due to this dust <laughs> hey Allergies are nothing to joke about, Karen. She's not dead yet, Pipsqueak. Calm down. Thanks, Anatoly. I think I'll go foraging outside. Oh, hold on a minute. I am too loud. <clears throat> I think I'll go foraging outside. With over 450 mosses, 900 fungi, and 70 slime molds, there's bound to be treasure up here. Roughing is fun. Anatoly knows so much about edible foods. We're in good hands. I think the slime molds will be the most delicious. M most certainly not. Well, what about the fungi? Do you even know which ones are poisonous, Anatoly? I, uh, I could figure that out. You can be the canary in a coal mine, Anatoly. I'm not any of the corpse here. <laughs> Keep both eyes open, little guy. Plenty of wolves and brown bears around. They won't be a problem. I read up on ten different techniques to incapacitate them. Number one is Anatoly! Oh yeah, <laughs> sorry Maria. I got carried away again. <laughs> I'll help Anatoly look for food. I'm definitely better at warning off wild animals. If we come up empty handed, we can always eat some of the food we brought. You mean the emergency rations? Bad idea, chump. Hey, Anatoly. Hey, Anatoly and Maria are getting the food. Gregor is gathering the firewood. That makes you our designated chef. Everyone's looking at you expectantly. You nod. Very excited to try your cooking. All right, everyone. Let's get to work while there's still sunlight. Later. <clears throat> Maria, Anatoly, Gregor. The three exit the cabin, leaving you and Karen alone. I think Anatoly put the kit. I think Anatoly put the supplies in the kitchen. Thanks for helping out with the cooking. Tutorial. To save the game, right click or hit the escape button on your keyboard to pull up the menu. This menu will allow you to adjust volume levels or exit to the title screen to view unlockables. Please note, going back to the main menu or exiting the game without the same will remove progress you made. Please be sure to save. Blue that. Do you have any experience making meals? What if I just say nothing? If you're a mute, you can tell me now. Are you a mute? No. <laughs> Just messing with you. Let me know if you need help chopping anything. I'm great with a knife. You think you impressed Karen? Huh. I'm pretty sure she'll remember that. Oh. Hmm. Maybe I can be Karen's thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Me and Karen are going to be a thing now. 
I was ripping on her earlier, but I shouldn't have been. Anyways, going to check out the living room. Let's talk later. Karen heads to the living room and starts dusting a little bit. He decided to look around the kitchen to find the ingredients for the meal tonight. <clears throat> Tutorial. You never know what you'll find around the cabin. Clues and secrets may be revealed by searching an area more than once. Why not give it a try? What area do you want to search first? The cupboards, of course. The first few cupboards are empty. Anatoly must have put the supplies somewhere else. He checked the cupboards again. Just some mouse turds and cobwebs. He checked the cupboard underneath the sink. You found a dead mouse! This would be a great gift to give to Karen. Yes, of course. I totally get that vibe from Karen that she will just love dead mice. You've added the dead mouse to your inventory. Doesn't mean I give it to her, right? I just have it. Like, I'm going weird on this one, so let's just keep looking. You put the dead mouse back in the cupboard. Wait, no, she is ready. Wait, you notice the letter L engraved in this in the side of the cupboard what a fitting gravestone for the mouse okay so that's neat behind the wood pile there's nothing but bought cobwebs back here thank but no spiders you look around the woodlogs closer this is just a pile of Norway spruce so this is about as far as I got in the last one where I didn't hit record that's why I'm kind of going through it a little bit quickly so if I'm going a little bit too quick uh, I think there's a slowdown button on YouTube I think the Norway spruce won't burn as hot as logs from an oak tree. These would be useless during the snowfall. You reconsider your views on Norway spruce. It's less dense and it won't fill the cabin with a heavy smell. Supplies aren't anywhere near here. The drawers. You check the drawers on the left. Just some dirty knives. <clears throat> you check the drawer above the mouse hole. Some kind of mold is growing in this one. Maybe Karen will find it appetizing. She did say she wants a mold, right? I'm pretty sure she said it differently. The drawers. You check the drawer above the wood pile. <gasps> Something is making it difficult to open. You pull it open with all of your might. <clears throat> Wee! Cabbage! It's time. Chomp it, sound off. Never fear, onion is here. Arr. Like my cousin Colbred says, I'll rise to the occasion. Raspberry! Always merry raspberry. I got... Potato. Cabbage stuffed me into this drawer. I'm pretty sure this counts as kidnapping. Uh, hey, ho, what the fuck? We're the chompets. Potato shut it. <clears throat> um, do, why talk with those boring yes, humans? All they have to give you is drama. Come chat with us instead. We'll share valuable, re valuable recipes you can cook. We'll share with you our secret chompette Yay! recipes. Collect them all to become a five-star chef. I don't want to be here. I am a victim. You can find unlocked recipes in the main menu under extra. But be sure to save the game. To celebrate, here's your first recipe card. Happy. Roasted egg vent with sesame and pomegranate. Meat free. Oh, yeah. yeah. If you ever want to talk, just come to the drawer. Chomp it. Uh -huh. Let's move uh -huh. out. Help me. Help me. I want to escape. Shut the fuck up, potato. Cabbage rudely slams the drawer closed as they start to like torture like the potato with jumper cables. You wonder if what you just saw was real. I want to say no. I want to say that I'm just hallucinating some wicked stuff that I found in the woods. Like, <clears throat> you're slightly worried what this means for your mental state. But only slightly worried. Uh, oh, oh, Karen. Uh, hey. Hey. Did you find the supplies? You shake your head. And I totally lied. You actually put them in the bedroom. Idiot. Here you go. You got the emergency supplies. Karen leaves you alone. You set a fire with some of the wood to get to get to work on dinner. Tonight's and tonight's oh my god tonight's entree vegetable stew. In a large saucepan over medium heat, you heat some water with potatoes, carrots, and celery in it. Thank God the child pants aren't here to watch this. Fifteen minutes later, you drain the pan and set the vegetables aside. Placing some butter in the saucepan, you melt it over medium heat. 
throw in some chopped onions and you cook it for about 10 minutes. The onions are tender and translucent. Perfect. Mwah. You next mix in some flour, salt, pepper, and heavy cream into the saucepan. Add in the vegetables to the mixture. Hours pass. <clears throat> Everyone's back. We're back. <laughs> More firewood than you'll ever need. We found some wild sorrel. Maybe tomorrow we'll have a bigger bounty. Anatoly's burying the lead. We saw a red deer. M Maria spotted it. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Anyways, killed 17 spiders today while you were out looking at deer. Yeah! That should come as no surprise. There's over 160 species of spiders here. Uh, uh, 160? Don't worry, Maria. I'm sure they're all in the bathroom or something. <laughs> no. Almost all of them were near the couch. Yeah! I was gonna sleep on the couch. That's where 16 of them were. I am not sleeping on that couch then. Hmm. And there's only two beds in the bedroom. Uh, <laughs> don't sweat it, Maria. I can sleep anywhere. So I'll sleep in that rocking chair. I'll sleep with one eye open, just in case any of them swarm the couch. <laughs> Thanks, Gregor. Karen and Anatoly, you two take the bedroom. Th Thanks, big guy. Joke's on you, Gregor. I always plan on taking one of the beds. <laughs> hey, Anatoly. I snore louder than a lumber yard. <laughs> Sweet dreams, chump. You turn back to your bubbling vegetable stew and try a bite. Mmm. I love how they did like they had to have taken a picture of real food. There's no other way it would look this delicious. This tastes pretty good. You cook vegetable stew. You set the table and ask everyone to dig in. <clears throat> look at them all. My happy starving family. Is that what this is? Oh, <clears throat> oh, well, wow. this smells delicious. Thank you. This must be, you must be a world-class chef. <laughs> Karen takes a bite. It's bland as hell. Karen, it tastes like every other vegetable stew I've ever had. So generic. I could probably use some meat next time. <laughs> Gross. For a side dish, we could bake some bread and utilize the Vajiria Vesca, also known as strawberries, for some jam. Nobody cares, Pips Week. Everyone laughs at Karen's polite ribbing. <laughs> ah, Karen's so funny. <laughs> Nothing makes you happier than cooking a great meal for friends. This could very well be the best day you've ever had. You go to bed stuffed. Why is the clock so creepy sounding? Oh my god. The day has passed. All right. <clears throat> Hey, you up? How'd you sleep? I was so warm last night, I didn't even need a blanket. Uh, uh, what time is it? About one hour until dawn. <gasps> Will you two pipe down? I'm trying to sleep over here. Mm, uh, Gregor, the birds outside aren't making much noise yet. We didn't bring many supplies, remember? Bet better to get a head start on gathering food. I honestly can't even see the trees right now. Gregor, did you see any spiders last night? There was a small one in the bed, in the bathroom. Ah! Actually, I did see a centipede by the sink. Maria turned a little pale. Karen's messing with you, Maria. Let's find more. Let's find more than wild soil today. <laughs> If you're a lucky little guy, maybe I'll teach you how to catch some wild brown trout. What's with you and meat, big guy? <laughs> Anatoly's herbalism book stated that there's many more species of plants to eat out here. Let's leave the fish alone. You know, I'm not, uh, into meat. That's a shame. I'd wake up early to go fishing. Cheer up, Karen. We'll get to... Observe the trout uh, at the very least. Maybe we'll see more red deer today. <laughs> that sounds like a waste of time, Gregor. 
Maybe we'll find some blackthorn berries. I, I love blackthorn berries. <laughs> we'll be back later. Can you watch our stuff today? You nod. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Don't steal anything, okay? You nod. Maria, Anatoly, Gregor, and Karen leave the cabin with a hop to their step. You're alone. But thankfully, you have a drawer of trompets to keep you company. Tutorial. Each day, you'll be asked to explore a different part of the cabin. You only get one choice. Then the day will end, so choose wisely. What do you want to check out today? Well, first, I'm going to save the game. Yes, these are all my other, sa other saves, but I'm going to delete them all because... I totally forget everything I did for every single thing. So I'm just restarting. I'm sure everyone who watched this earlier is just loving that idea. Or maybe you are. Maybe you honestly God love it. But to me, I feel a little bit foolish for forgetting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go go into the basement. I've never been in the basement. Let's check it out. This door goes into the basement. There's no reason to go in the basement right now. No, wait, no, no, we're gonna. That's a waste of time. Let's look around the bathroom. Yep, it's a bathroom, toilet, bathtub, and a cabinet underneath the sink. Open the cabinet. Yeah. You peer into the cabinet. <gasps> I found a spider. It's pretty small, but it's hairy. It's far too gross to even squish. <gasps> There's a note buried in the spider web. What the? Good day. We have received a fair number of complaints from Rosalina Ulrich over her perceived harassment of her nephew, Marco. Roslana, Roslana alleges that you have been frightening him and are causing a public disturbance when traveling into town. Her list of complaints is as follows. Erratic shuffling, sneering at Marco in an attempt to intimidate or frighten, babbling incoherently. We understand that this is by no means illegal, but humbly request that you stop immediately. Failure to do so will result in an in-person meeting to discuss. Thank you for your time. Yours truly, Leonard Kazmiers. You take the complaint letter with you. You shut the cabinet. Hmm. What else do you want to check out? So that was neat. Uh, I didn't know that, like, that, if that's how I normally act, why are they so cool with me? Okay, uh... Wait, black markings? What if I look into the mirror and I don't like what I see? Inspect the black markings. Doesn't look like black mold. Must be residue from some old liquids. Hmm. The others should be coming back any minute now. No, I don't think so. Let's, uh... Turn on bath. The water isn't coming out. Oh well. Alright, nothing happens. Look into the mirror. You get ready to look at your reflection in the mirror. Nah. No thank you. Hard pass. Nope. No. No, not a chance. Not today. No thanks. Nah. No. That's <laughs> funny. Sorry. No. Never. No chance. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Okay, I guess you, um... Don't want to... Like, how ugly am I? Like, I have to be... Terribly frightening. And the others are so kind to not freak out at me, I guess. You leave the bathroom to go greet them. <clears throat> We're back! <laughs> Knock it off, Maria! It's pretty rare to be scared of one. It's not! <laughs> Who knew the big guy would be so scared of. T t t shut up! You don't understand! I don't think anyone understands, Gregor. It was just a marmot, Gregor. Not a monster. 
<laughs> Maria laughs so hard you feel that your ears ring. <laughs> Tears are rolling down Maria's cheeks. She's laughing so hard that she's about to hyperventilate. Stop Maria from hyperventilating. Mm, absolutely not. One less mouth to feed, right? You don't get it. It's pretty personal. Then please explain, big guy. I, uh... Gregor looks incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> Let's leave him alone. We found some raspberries and elderberries near the cabin. Quite the selection of berries. We also found some more wild sorrel. Is this going to be enough for a good meal? Everyone is looking at you for an answer. You decide to do an inventory of all available ingredients. It takes you a while, but you decide on your specialty, cabbage rolls. You first bring a large pot of water to a boil. Let the cabbage leaves boil for two minutes, draining the pot into the sink. In a medium mixing bowl, you combine some cooked rice, onion, and egg, salt, pepper, and lawn with some tomato sauce. You use your hands to mix thoroughly and decide to wash your hands after it won't come off. Oh, after. After. Wow. Dividing the rice mixture into evenly cabbage, evenly between the cabbage leaves. You then roll them up and tie with the string around them so they stay in one piece. You place the cabbage rolls in a large skillet over medium heat, pouring the rest of the tomato mixture over the top. Covering it, you bring it to a boil. You reduce the heat to low and let the cabbage rolls simmer for about 40 minutes, being sure to baste it with the liquid. Ta-da! Delicious looking cabbage rolls. Maria looks optimistic. Karen looks skeptical. Anatoly looks curious. Gregor looks thrilled. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, wait. Okay. You watch intently as everyone takes their first bite. <clears throat> mm, that's pretty darn good. Wow, I could all eat the whole batch to myself. I think the vegetable stew tasted better, but I'm loving how tender the cabbage is. The sauce is pretty red. Did you use fresh tomatoes for it? It really adds to it. Spoon some of the liquid on top of it. You'll thank me later. Mm, incredible. It's definitely growing on me. Well, thanks again for cooking. <laughs> this really was something special. Everyone leaves the dishes behind for you to do. Of course. <clears throat> Not happening. You settle in and go to bed. Everyone goes to bed full. Tomorrow will be another great day. <clears throat> good morning everybody or good morning everyone <sighs> again Gregor can't you let us sleep in not today why storm clouds are gathering outside we need to find some food before it begins a downpour Gregor, you're overreacting. We have enough food to last us a while. Enough food? Uh, I thought we used most of the supplies for last night's dinner. He's right. The meal you made was delicious, but he used a lot of what we had. Gregor's also correct. Precipitation is unusually high in this area, with many areas being high risk for flooding. It'd be foolish to not go out and look for food today. You really think it will flood? Thankfully, the cabin is on high ground. But that doesn't mean we're safe from floodwaters. It's always a possibility, so it can't hurt to be prepared. You're losing it, Gregor. Karen! There's nothing to worry about. I think Gregor's right, Karen. Huh? It won't hurt to prepare for the worst. Hmm. I think she's right, Karen. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Anatoly, <laughs> let's go out and prepare for the storm. Foraging should be a key priority today. There are plenty of edible foods, and it has a better odds, and it has better odds than trying to hunt. Give me a few minutes, and I'll plot out, and I'll plot our route on some paper. Let me help, little guy. <clears throat> Anatoly and Gregor head to the bedroom to consult the map. 
Maria and Karen are still hanging around. Tutorial. Unfortunately, in life, you can't make everyone happy. When given a choice to speak to your character, choose wildly. You can only select one of them. I'm going to Sabe. 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 Try to max out your bond with certain characters for unique dialogue and scenarios. Which one would you like to talk to? Karen. Hey. This paper nailed to the wall looks pretty ancient. What were the old days like? Extremely brutal. Oh, really? You'll have to share the details with me later. Okay. Karen will not be able to stomach your stories. But you still agree to tell her the details later. Karen will definitely remember that. Oh, it's like, oh, terrible details? Please tell me. I need to know those details. Oh, God. All right. Oh, my God. You hear a shout from the other room. Gregor and Anatoly come back from their meeting. Gregor is blushing slightly. Hey. Uh... Can you cook something while we're out? You nod. Thank you. All right, everyone. We have our route now. Let's beat those rain clouds. The group leaves, determined as ever. You have the cabin all to yourself. Hmm? What's that noise? Sounds like it's coming from the kitchen. Huh? Radio? What's going on with that radio? You didn't even notice it on the ground when you walked in. Did somebody leave this radio here? It looks newer than anything you've seen before. It seems to be broken. You better hold on to this. You've got the strange radio. Before you cook dinner, what should you check out? I guess I should... Oh. Now that appears to be my dryer i have a dryer in here so recording will be paused but the stream will not be so i apologize i will be right back everybody enjoy the quiet pleasantly whatever hello everybody i apologize i am back so we are going to I still feel the basement is a useless venture. The bathroom has nothing in it. Bedroom. Or I can find more stuff in the kitchen, talk to the chompettes. Nah, we'll go to the bedroom. Poor Anatoly. Karen snoring is, slow, is so loud, she even wakes you up sometimes. Anatoly must be running on fumes. Would he have the courage to wake her up, though? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, wait. That's it? No. No. I want it to be different. I want it to be actually substantial. Oh, yes. Extremely brutal. Oh, yeah. Yes, I'll cook while you're gone. Yes, that'd be great. Radios. That's crazy. Who would have thought a radio would be here? All right. So... <clears throat> I think I will check out the kitchen and look for more stuff. I'll talk to the chompette since I have nothing better to do. Hello! Hello! I can't do that. <clears throat> Good to see you again! <coughs> Thought you abandoned us. Help me. Please. Please, for the love of God, help me. I don't want to be here. Why are you trying to fool them? Go ahead and make those meals you enjoy so much. Raspberry. No, thanks. That vegetable stew? Gross! You already stunk up the cabin last night. Spare us a repeat. Onion! It almost smelled as bad as you, Stinky. Almost. Aren't you going to give them the recipe, Onion? I guess. Hey, never knows those four humans don't give you any recipes? Those monsters. That's why you should spend more time with us, right? Of course. I have the perfect recipe for you today. It'll make the kitchen smell nice afterwards, and it'll impress dinner guests. You received the borscht recipe. Don't burn down the cabin making it, okay? 
You nod. <laughs> Don't be a stranger. Chompets. Mosey out. You, you shut the drawer and wait for the others to return back. So... There's like... Okay, so it says to save. There, saved. If I were to go to the title screen, and go to extras, I would see <clears throat> the recipes, right? Okay. Twenty-seven tall height, super tall glass of water. Okay. Karen will chew you up and spit you out. If Gregor thinks the glass is always half full, Karen thinks the glass isn't full enough. Needs to be cleaned better and can probably use something stronger than water. She's one tough cookie and it and a difficult wall at the crack. Maybe you can marinate that away? Maybe you can marinate that away? Okay. Skill, Machiavellian nature. Oh, Machiavellian nature. Has a knife. Okay. That's just a skill. She just has a knife. Height, or age, 33. Height, giant beanstalk tier. Oh, oh, giant beanstalk tier. Always the optimist. Gregor, always the optimist. Gregor likes splitting firewood, eating things at one gulp, and helping out his friends. <laughs> Gregor's a rare guy with a heart of gold. Will you take it from him? Skills optimists and can reach high shelves. Anatoly, age 25. Height, Neither pipsqueak or titan. Fun size. Anatoly is rumored to be a worldly scholar, but that's bogus. He only pretends to read books. He never learned simple addition or, sub or subtraction, which is probably why he looked up to Maria so much. Will you let Maria have a taste? Or gobble him up for yourself? Skill herbology. Illiteracy. Maria. Maria, age 20 years old, height, small fry, energetic and always willing to learn. Maria's can-do attitude is the glue that holds the group together. A lover of animals, her kind heart advocates for leaving them alone. Skill, keeping tension simmered. Particle physics. Particle physics? Why? Why would you know particle physics? Whatever. Uh, so is this just straight? Okay, so these are vegan borscht. So these are actually real recipes. They're not just. There's something at the bottom, like something creepy. No? Okay. Great. Alright, well, I am going to go back. So I guess that was a waste of time. Well, not really a waste. I got to learn a little bit more. Maria's back, Maria back early today. Oh my god. Hey. The others are still looking for food outside. And I totally found some more berries. But nothing that will feed all of us. Please don't tell the others. But I'm a little worried about our supplies. I crunch the numbers and we don't have enough food, even with rationing, to last if there's a big storm and if we get stuck here. <sighs> Maria seems disappointed in your inventory management. Can you try cooking with a little less this evening? You nod. Thank you. You've done such a great job with meals so far. You're very sweet. Maria blushing a little bit. <laughs> Maria will remember that. I had to grab my pillow. Maybe you could teach me to cook sometime. You nod. Uh, looking forward to it. Oh, wait. Hey, you can hold a cooking class this year someday. Rudely interrupting a tender moment, the others burst into the cabin. Yeah, it's nothing like a threat for a tender moment, right? 
She's going to attack me if I don't use less. Don't be sold down, everyone. We got tons of good berries. Jam is so bland without any sugar. Do you have any sugar? You shake your head sadly. Yikes. Turn that frown upside down, Karen. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? I'm not smiling for you, Gregor. Iggy, uh, you missed out. The sun really is tremendous on our way back. Hues of orange, red, even a little purple poking out. Red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in morning, sailors take warning. Ah, sorry. Totally professional YouTuber here. So we can expect a sa so we can expect a sailor's delight tomorrow. That's awesome. You're such an optimist, big guy. We must have a we must have walked a few miles today. Gorgeous sights. You can even see snow on the tips of mountains. That rumble sounded like a dying calf. You look from person to person, trying to determine who it was. It was definitely Maria. Maria, I'd recognize that sound from anywhere. Yeah, guilty. Maria looks embarrassed, but the group laughs at her honestly. Like honestly laughing is so much more wholesome than just fake laughing. Except for you. You search your mind for something to say, for something to say, bleh, for something to say, but all you can think of is an old riddle. <clears throat> Those who have it do not want it. Those who have it least succeed. Those who have it for too long perish. When you feed it, it gets smaller. What am I? Hmm. Mm, dust? Try again, big guy. Everyone is pondering the answer. Maria's face lights up. I got it. Is it hunger? Correct. Yeah, I was going to guess that. So, uh, what's on the menu tonight, chef? Bread and jam. You crush the berries in your small mortar and pedestal, spraying it on some crusty bread. Ta-da. You cooked raspberry jam and bread the bread's a little tough Gregor don't look a gift horse in the mouth but this homemade jam is to die for <laughs> sorry uh, no you're right Gregor this bread stinks Maria everybody laughs you're not sure this could be called a meal but I got the job done. Everyone thanks you for dinner and heads off to sleep. You go to bed wishing you had more. You have a strange dream. Something is riding your back. And it's becoming a nuisance. You try to see it in the mirror. But you can't get a good look at it. You try almost everything. But it won't get off. The pain between your shoulder blades is getting worse by the minute. You wander away from the cabin, stumbling by a river to soak your pain in the cool water. You didn't want things to come to this, but you've exhausted all other options. You swim out to the middle. Rocks on the bottom cut your feet. You slip and fall to your knees. You lean back, trying to submerge the thing underneath the waters. But it won't drown. It won't drown. It won't drown. You splash frantically, plunging your head beneath the water. The current takes you downstream. You try swimming to shore, but it's no use. Water fills your mouth and nostrils. After a minute, you stop struggling against the current. As you gaze up at the sky, you feel it leaving your back, drifting into the sky as you sink to the bottom. As you take your last grasp, you see what was on your back staring into your eyes. But you don't even have the air in your lungs to scream. You wake in a cold sweat. Damn. <sighs>
<coughs> Wake up! Sorry, you were making strange noises in your sleep. <clears throat> What's going on, Gregor? Did the lightning wake you up? It woke me up. I tried to fall back asleep, but it's so loud. Uh, let's just get back to sleep and talk about this in the morning. Everyone nods in agreement and gets back to bed. <clears throat> Except for you. You can't fall back asleep. You still have goosebumps from the nightmare. Karen snoring is louder than a sawmill. You find it very loud and very distracting. You don't sleep a wink. Everyone is now up and awake in the cabin. You hear the f oop, no, you hear the front door open or something. Anatoly sounds petrified. I looked at the door and we're completely surrounded by floodwaters. Sounds like sailors take warning was more appropriate for today. Maybe it'll clear up tomorrow? <laughs> you can't steal big guy's optimism, Karen. Why the hell not? That's all he's got going for him. He's also good at chopping wood, though. <laughs> Knock it off, you two. Maria, do you still think it'll clear up tomorrow? I give it a 27% chance of it clearing up tomorrow. Based on what? I was bored stiff, so I read a book on local precipitation levels for the last 20 years in the living room. Sounds like you're stealing Anatoly's thunder. Anatoly, you're, you're, a, book, you're, 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 Anatoly, you're a book nerd, right? Why didn't you read it? Uh, couldn't make it past the cover? Is that right? Y yes? That book should have some great books on artists and crafting and natural sciences. Why let them sit there gathering dust? How did you arrive at 27% chance of it clearing up tomorrow? It's easy. Take the time of year, multiply by a factor of... Um, Maria begins to explain meteorology to you. She isn't dumbing any of this down. Uh, it's similar to... Blah, 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 equals zero. Where, uh, okay, so the first thing you need to understand is minutes of explanation feel like hours. You look over at Anatoly. He's listening intently to Maria. So intently, he hasn't blinked yet. You can see his eyes drying up. A tear rolls down one of his cheeks. This is brutal to watch. Huh. Maria finally wraps up her lecture. She ends with a bow. Nobody claps. Tough crowd. Maria, that was awe-inspiring. You lost me a few minutes in, but it's okay. I didn't understand a word of it. <laughs> Anatoly turns to you. Anyway, there's no telling how long this will last. We, we can't leave the cabin until these floodwaters stop. I know our food situation is a little tight, but I know you make the right decisions. I believe in you. Mm, me too. Uh, it looks like we have enough leftover berries for more bread and raspberry jam. I'll pass on jam. Just give me more crusty bread. <laughs> everyone laughs except for me. <clears throat> With everyone stranded in the cabin, you need to keep everyone fed and happy. You sneak out to the kitchen while everyone is talk still talking. You get out some crusty bread and get to work on making some more jam. With the kitchen to yourself, you decide to check in on the chompettes. Hello! Hello! Don't worry, as leader of the chompettes, I'll make sure none of the humans know about us. Onion. That big guy would try eating me like an apple, so definitely don't tell them about us. Potato, why don't you talk again? <laughs> Are your plans going alright? Ah, 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 ah. Got another cornbread classic for you. Did you hear about the bread maker's bakery burning down? No. Her business is now toast. 
<laughs> that one's been done to death. Do you know how raspberry and milk were introduced? You tell her no. Raspberry, raspberry milk shake. You let out an audible groan. Ha ha ha. Cornbread teach you that one. Nope. Wasted an entire day thinking about that terrible pun. Okay. Potatoes just all like, I refuse to speak. I am a prisoner. I am a hostage. Ha <laughs> ha. It was well worth the time and effort, Raspberry. Maybe you'll win the annual Chompack Comedy Competition this year. Raspberry! Of course. Not while I'm here. I won't choke on stage this year. Isn't that every year, Red? <laughs> oh, that was a potato. Ha 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 ha. We still talk about that closing line, Red. You're going to do great this year. <laughs> Anyways, don't even think of eating us if you're hungry. Chomp pets stick together through thick and thin. Rain or shine. Feast and famine. Potato, I swear to God, repeat the line, we're locking you up again. <clears throat> uh, hey, Potato, what's your line, buddy? <sighs> Life or death. That's right. Chompets, move out. The Chompets somehow, the Chompets somehow managed to close the drawer on themselves. You bring the crusty bread and jam into the living room. Carrot interrupts you as you bring in the food. Took you long enough. Karen looks at two slices of bread left in a mason in a mason dry raspberry jam. There's mold on these last two slices of bread. Karen is right. What the hell is the matter with you? You grip the knife tightly in your hand. You think this is enough for five of us? Wait, we can't throw this bread away. It's all we have left. Gregor's right. Anatoly, will mold spores give us food poisoning? I'm a small scientist. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Let's pick up as much mold as we can. We can't leave with the flood waters, so this will have to last us another day. Everyone grimly nods, ripping their piece, ripping apart their pieces like a pack of wolves. Gregor seems to unhinge his jaw and just eat it in one bite. He looks like a duck eating bread. Thanks again. Bread and jam isn't much of a meal, but it's more than we've had. In, but it's more than what? Wow, wow, bleh. Bread and jam isn't much of a meal, but it's more than we had when we left Ukraine. Strangely topical. This, the pretty sure this was before this whole craziness happened. Pretty sure. Plenty of rainwater outside, so at least we won't die of dehydration. But until the storm is over, nobody should leave the cabin. Should clear up if we just give it a chance. Anatoly, where are you getting that information from? One of the books in the bookshelf about the climate here. Hmm. You're illiterate, so that definitely is a lie. Uh, uh, I've seen him reading. Little guy's been studying. I am serious. He pretends to read those books because he wants us to think that he's smart. But I can tell he's just staring at the page, faking it. What do you think? Anatoly doesn't know his weather conditions from a hole in the ground. Karen is right. Hmm. <laughs> You're funny. Uh, uh, keep pretending with those books, Anatoly. Brutal, Karen. I found an old picture book in the living room, Anatoly. Let me know if you want it, small fry. K Karen? Karen smiles at you. I guess let's call it a day. Yeah. Sure. Everyone shuffles off to their, to their sleeping areas. Six minutes later. I'm glad you called out Anatoly's bluff. You continue to impress. It's a shame Anatoly is sleeping in the same bedroom. I should have never let him be the one to share with me. But what if it was just me and you? I'm sure we could study and squeeze a few novels in before bed. You nod. Well, we'll have to see if we can kick him out at some point. 
right? Oh, you'll have to tell me about that anatomization. Oh, you'll have to tell me about that anatomization book in the bookshelf. Really cool pictures in there. Karen looks like she has a crush on you. Let me know if you're ever free for a lesson. Okay? Karen walks away looking very happy. You are definitely sure Karen will remember that. Oh yeah, me and a psychopath, growing stronger relationship-wise. Gonna smash that. <laughs> you get ready for bed and put a blanket on. You go to sleep very hungry. Uh, I don't think I can ever, it's like, like, would you willingly date a yandere? I don't know. I don't think I would ever be able to handle any of that. And it sounds like she would be that kind of person. You don't dream the entire night, but you sleep through everyone waking up. And that's how fast a deer. Oh, and that's how fast a deer could run if startled. Whoa! Incredible! Impressive! Yeah. I wish we had a deer here. With the food getting lower, let's just skip today's meal. Hmm. No. It's only for one day. Various cultures and religions have practiced fasting throughout history. That doesn't make any of us feel better, Anatoly. What options do we have? Our food wasn't rationed properly. Anatoly leaves, mumbling to himself. So passive aggressive of him. Everyone goes to a separate area. Karen in the bedroom. Gregor in the living room. Maria in the kitchen. And Anatoly in the bathroom. Who do you want to speak to? So, I'm going to save it here. Ciao. And we're going to move on. Speak with Karen. Looks like she's just slicing away at a block of wood. Hey. I thought you went out a secret. I've actually enjoyed your cooking so far. The others expect me to be rude and mean. So I have to keep that reputation up, right? Can't have anyone thinking I'm soft. You're not sure where this is coming from? Promise me you'll give me some cooking lessons soon. Okay. Oh. Oh, she's blushing. Uh, scary knife. Alright. She's not ready yet. But you nod politely. Thank you. Definitely sure Karen will remember that. Oh, yes. She found my secret anatomical cooking book. I think that's what this is all about. You leave Karen by herself. <coughs> Everyone looks pretty down this evening. Wish the rain would just stop. You're all doing great. We must almost be out of the... Well, you're all doing great. We must almost be at the end of this nightmare. Mm, I'm so hungry. Me too. You are too. You wish everyone had a, a good night and get ready for bed. <coughs> you go to bed with a growling stomach. You have a strange dream. A boy is yelling at you in the kitchen. You keep telling him to lie down on the tray. But he keeps shaking his head, calling you names. So you do it. You lie down on the tray and make your body as flat as a board. You show him how it's done. His anger turns to courage, and he pushes you into the oven. As the stench of burning hair fills your lungs, you see him sneering back at you. You wake in a cold sweat. Jesus Christ. That little boy looked terrifying. That was clearly me looking like at him through the oven port or something. My God. Everyone seems to be sleeping in later than normal. Their stomachs must have kept them awake all night. The rain is still pouring outside. You can barely make out the trees from the windows. 
You hear a stirring of blankets, arms, and legs. Maria looks petrified. I couldn't sleep. Anatoly has bags under his eyes. This storm is too loud. Karen looks out of it. The crabbin was creaking so much last night. It sounded alive. Gregor looks a little gaunt. I got a good look out the window. And? I couldn't see anything due to the rain. Great observation, Gregor. I was so hungry last night. I kept pacing around my bed. Karen turns to you. When is this going to end? I checked outside the door again. The floodwaters keep rising. Unfortunately, we're going to need to stay put unless one of us wants to drown in rainwater. As soon as the weather lets up, we'll all be able to scavenge for supplies. How close is the nearest town? I don't know. Didn't you have a map on you? Mm, I think I dropped it while we were running after Gregor. I'm sure it'll show up eventually. <laughs> Maria and Anatoly go white as a sheet. How are we going to find our way back now? Well, we'll have to ride out the storm. Maria looks at you. We're down to our last slice of bread. I don't know how much longer we can put off eating. The group stares at you. It will, it will clear up in no time. Maybe you're right. The group looks worried. They all gravitate to an area. <clears throat> you can tell Gregor's putting on a fake optimism and Maria's having trouble. Which one do you want to speak with today? Uh, okay, well... I guess I should converse with... Maria? Oh my god. It's cold as hell over here. I'm surprised Gregor isn't freezing to death at night. How does he do it? You explain to Maria how the size of a person in fat content determines how warm they are naturally. Yeah. Wish I was as big as Gregor. But to be honest, I don't need to be that tall to make a difference in the world. Do you know what he wanted to do for a career? Maria does her best Gregor impression. To play firewood and gaze at the stars. How boring is that? Depends on the person. But pretty boring. You're so funny. Thanks for coming in and chatting with me. Maria blushes a little. You make it easier to pass the time. Thank you. You're pretty sure Maria will remember that. You thank her and leave the bedroom. You call everyone together. They all look grim. You could cut the tension in the room with a knife. Everyone is staring at you. They're expecting that last piece of bread for dinner. You bring it out. Everyone cannot take their eyes off it. You instruct everyone to take a pinch. And slowly, all five of you tear it apart like a wishbone. Everyone studies their piece of bread carefully. Wondering how long it will last. Karen is the first to eat hers. She chews each bite a few hundred times before swallowing. Anatoly chews it cautiously, opening his mouth once he fin opening his mouth once he finishes each bite. Maria nibbles on it silently, eyes wide, moving from person to person. And Gregor. Gregor just pops it in his mouth like a cherry. It was gone in an instant. <laughs> it was gone in an instant. <laughs> the group thanks you awkwardly. It's not much, but you've run out of options. You wish everyone good night and get ready for bed. You go to bed starving.
<laughs> well, everybody, I think we are going to leave it here. It has been amazing. I am glad I got back into this, and I am going to be recording this every few days if I can manage it. So, if you'd like to follow me on this again, I know it is kind of like a repeat and re-upload, but I have ironed out the voices a little bit. I am just kind of going through this a different way. So, like, I'm purposely trying to get with Karen. So, yeah, psychopaths stick together, you know what I mean? So, thank you for joining me today, and I hope you join me next time. If you do like it, hit like and subscribe. And check me out next time. I'm also on stream on Twitch. That's great. Good job, professional YouTuber. So thank you very much. And I will see you all next time. Bye bye.